Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I've got a fun and whimsical project for you using my new birds masks. These little 5x7 masks are what I use to create this very fun 8x10 mixed media piece of artwork and it's got many layers of techniques so you could use them all or you could use some of them on a totally different project but anyway if you've got a few minutes let's go check it out So today I am going to use again the Deco Art Triple Thick Brush On Gloss Glaze. You may remember I did a video on this a couple of weeks ago and I applied it in specific areas and I really enjoyed working with it. So I did a little thinking and experimenting and thought about other ways that I could use it. So today I would like to use it as a resist on a mixed media background that I'm going to put some of my birds masks on to create a cute little piece of art. So I will get to making ghost prints with the birds masks in the second phase, but in the first phase, I'm building this mixed media background. So I'm using a piece of gesso board and I have glued onto it with gloss gel medium. So you can see it has a glossy surface. I've glued down some postage stamps and some playing cards and some old letters and a piece of a gel print and some book pages, etc. And I am now going to um, put the triple thick through my mask called Racing Spots and hopefully use it to create a resist on this background that I can either paint over or add gesso over and wipe it off the surface of this and have sort of like a two-tone background for my birds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mask and lay it over the background and I'm going to use my soft bristle brush. I'm using the Princeton Velvet Touch three-quarter inch wash brush. <clears throat> and I'm going to brush the triple thick through the stencil in a thin but even layer. So I'm just going to hold it on the bottom and start from the top and just brush this product through the spaces in the stencil. I like this stencil design called Racing Spots because it is sort of a nice full background pattern. It's not distracting, but it's also not um, rigid. It's kind of organic. All the spots are different sizes and different shapes, and they're not dispersed evenly, so it's pretty organic, and I think it's going to be great for going behind my birds and creating one more layer of texture and pattern to this mixed media background. Once you're done with that, you're going to lift the stencil off and the key is to then toss this in a basin of warm soapy water so that this gloss glaze does not stick to the surface of it and ruin the stencil. You want to wash it off right away. It is clean up with water. It's real easy with a little soap and water to get it off of the brushes and the stencils while it's wet. I'm working on my nonstick craft mat surface today which is awesome because everything just scrubs off of it or even comes off of it with your thumbnail including this thick glossy stuff so that's what keeps my desk nice and clean which is nice because it's not distracting when you're working so let's see I'm going to hold this at an angle and you can see the pattern um, has transferred in the gloss I think you can see that and so now we just have to let it dry and then come back and see how it works as a resist. Okay, so while we wait for the background to dry, we're going to create some line art black images from the bird's stamps. So I'm using my nine by 12 gel plate and a six inch brayer. And for this, I'm gonna use some basic Amsterdam black tube heavy body paint because it'll give us a better ghost print. It's thicker and more of it will pile up and stay underneath the mask for a real solid ghost print. The problem or the challenge is that some of the paint 
left behind on the plate for the ghost print will stick to the back of the mask. And so the thinner fluid acrylics don't always give the most crisp ghost print when you're trying to use them like this. So I'm gonna suggest you use a heavy body paint. Okay, so the nine by 11 gel plate will probably fit three of the birds. And so I'll do a couple of different prints so that I can get a couple versions of each of them. And I'm also gonna work on two different types of paper. I'm gonna work on regular basic tissue and then I'm gonna work on something a little nicer, and this is Joggle's Printable Rice Paper. It is thin paper, but it has fibers in it, um, and it has a smooth side and it has a rough side. So you wanna use the smooth side down on the plate um, so that it doesn't stick, and what I like about this is that it will tear with soft, fuzzy edges. Um, and it's called printable rice paper because you can send it through your laser printer and print your own design on it and then paint it and wash it and stamp on it and incorporate it into your mixed media artwork. So it's pretty cool to be able to print your own design on high quality rice paper. So we're going to try experimenting with both that and the tissue. And so the first thing I need to do is to create a ghost print. And that means I need to get a cleanup sheet to take out all the paint from in between to leave the ghost print behind. So I'll just use one of the tissue sheets to do that. So I'm going to be a liberal with the um, paint because, again, I don't want to... Let's get a little bit more. Um, some of it's going to stick to the back of the mask, and I want to have as good and crisp and solid as a, of a print as a, possible. So I'm going to go a little heavy, and I'm using this heavy body paint. So I'm going to roll that out evenly, and then I'm going to, and it's going to be hard to see these because they're black and it's black, right? So I'm going to lay out a uh, couple of the three, I think, of the birds will fit on here. You want to leave yourself enough room around them so you can tear them out. So i am only got two on this one, and I'm not going to push it. Because you want to be able to tear them out, and you don't want them overlapping or running off the edge of the plate. So the idea to get a good ghost print is to really apply pressure with your fingertips down in between all the beautiful fine line detail of these birds. So you want to use your fingertips and just get down in there, especially pay attention to the eyes and some of the little patterns that are formed by these laser cut details. You want to make sure you pull all of that out. And that may take two prints. Wow, look at how cool that is. I love that. And you could definitely use this um, in an art piece as well, so I'll save that. And it may take two prints... So I'm going to grab another piece of like clean up tissue here. Try to get the rest of the paint out of the spaces and off of the plate. Then we're going to lift up and transfer. I don't know if all that gray is going to pick up. We'll see. I do want to get a clean transfer. Ah, there we go. Very nice. Okay. So here's two of my birds in nice black ghost prints. Um, and this is what I want to tear out and add to my mixed media background. Okay. So again, we've got a great, fun first print. And this time I'm going to use the tissue. Beautiful, really nice detail, perfect. So I'm just gonna go through and make a couple more of these on each different type of paper to give myself a variety of prints and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I have several great bird ghost prints on both types of paper and the next step is to perforate them out of the background. I like soft organic edges so I don't use scissors but the technique that I'm going to use for these is a little bit of water on a fine brush and I'm just going to run the water in a line right outside of the shape of the bird and then I will be able to tear right along this water line, giving myself a nice organic edge. And this works on both types of paper. 
So you're just gonna come and gently perforate the tissue and the rice paper the same way, right along that water line that you made with the paintbrush. You still have to be very careful Uh, I like I lost the tip of the beak there because I had too much water. There we go. So we lost the tip of his beak, but you just have to be careful not to get too much water. So I could come in here. Also, I went in a little further on the legs with that water. There. And so he has a nice organic edge and it makes it pretty easy to um, to take it out uh, from the background. So the next one I'll do is on the rice paper in the same way. The rice paper is gonna give us really nice fuzzy edges because of the fiber. But again, I'm probably using too much water near the beak there. Okay, so. You can see the fuzzy edges. They're a little bit different. The transparency is also a little bit different. This one is gonna be, I think, a little bit more disappearing of the tissue when you glue it down. And this one I think may stay showing a little bit more, but I love the fuzzy fiber texture edge of this. So each paper has its pluses and minuses and its um, different properties. So the next step is to then check out our background for the resist preparation. Okay, so this application of the triple thick over the gloss gel medium is not providing enough contrast for the resist. And I was a little bit afraid of that. So the issue is that the triple thick is glossy and the gloss gel medium is glossy. So the paint is sticking to them equally. And when I go to wipe it off, I'm not getting a resist because I've got a glossy surface on both ends. So, um, I am showing all the trials and tribulations of this process in the video because I hope that you can learn that way and understand that every time I try something new doesn't mean that it always works. So I've got some fine pumice gel. This is um, uh, going to provide a, a matte, um, toothy texture that will contrast with the triple thick gloss glaze. And I think that's what we need. I think you could also do a matte gel medium over the whole thing so that you have a combination of matte and gloss. I think we could do matte varnish over the whole thing and then add the triple thick. Um, thinking that this might give me a little bit of a toned back of the background because it's going to be slightly gray in color and it's going to add a gritty texture. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and brush it over the surface. Um, I'm adding a little water and because it's a little thick, it's been in the heat for a while. So this should tone back my background just a little bit. And then it should also provide a whole different surface to the triple thick. And hopefully the paint will stick to the two different surfaces in different ways. So let's see how this works. So again, it's fine pumice gel. They do make a coarse pumice gel. Um, this is just gonna have a nice fine texture and it's slightly gray. So I've added a little water um, and it's not totally opaque. So we will still see the ephemera through it, but it's gonna knock it back a little bit, which is kind of a good thing because it's just gonna make the background a little bit more subtle. And hopefully it'll be a good alternate surface to the triple thick and we'll get the paint um, really working as a resist. So I'm just going to lay this over the whole surface. You can see that it, even though it's a grayish color, it's not opaque. So we can still see all of our fun ephemera through it. There we go and we'll let that dry, and then I'll apply the triple thick to it. Once this dries, I'll apply the triple thick to it in the same way I did previously with the brush and the stencil, and I will be back with a new background surface. 
and we'll give it another shot. Okay, so here's my second attempt at the resist background with the triple thick glossy glaze. You would think that I would sort this out before I did the video, but I wanted to show you that sometimes it takes trials and tribulations to get a mixed media technique to work, and then it doesn't always work the first time you set out the gate. Now, I think that's important for everyone to realize that even a professional artist such as myself, experimentation is the key. It's the only way you learn new things is to fail sometimes. So that being said, I have coated this with that fine pumice gel. And then I went back over it with the triple thick through the stencil, exactly as I had demonstrated before. Now I'm going to come in with a burnt umber light and hopefully get a two-tone resist here. Um, the, the reason why I think it's going to work now is that we have two different surfaces. We have a matte surface with a pumice um, texture that should grab the paint in a different way than the triple thick glossy um, coating does, but I can't guarantee anything. So I've got a damp paper towel, a bucket of water to make that even more damp. And my hope is that this burnt umber light is going to grab onto the fine pumice gel in a different way that it grabs on to the triple thick and that I can wipe it off and use that as a resist. So let's give it a try. So I'm just going to go ahead and squirt that right on the surface, take the damp towel and rub it on and i think i already see a little bit of success happening there so let's get this even a little darker i don't want to go too dark but yes i'm now starting to really see the resist from the triple thick because the paint is going to take to that in a different way so like i said i don't want this to be too dark but I do want to have a little bit of texture showing up. So the idea is to get it down there right like that and give it a couple of minutes and then wipe it um, off the surface. Okay, so you can already see that texture sort of showing up and I'm going to take a dry towel now and try to hit the high points of the triple thick and see if I can just wipe it off of the surface of that there we go. And I'm very gently wiping it off the surface of the triple thick because it's shiny and glossy and the fine pumice gel is letting it sort of stay on the lower layer. So we can wipe this as much or as little as you want. So here we're getting a really, the more I wipe it, the more the paint is coming off of the glossy surface of the triple thick. So that pattern becomes even more obvious. I could actually hit it with a little bit of the damp cloth and see what happens. Yeah, this is really cool. So this is giving me a nice texture pattern and depending, you just have to see how much you want to knock back and how much you want to leave behind. So whether you wanna come in with your wet towel and really make it very subtle, or if you want to leave it to be very bold that just depends and you can of course add more paint and wipe it again and go back and forth with this until you get it how you want it i'm really liking the way this is looking now thank goodness i hate to have it not work but that was the key the problem before was the gloss gel medium had exactly the same surface slickness as the triple thick and so it wasn't really a contrast here we've got a contrast so the paint is taking to two totally different surfaces i mean the paper towel is doing a lot but you could come back and hit it with a sanding block and it would come off of the raised areas kind of nicely so why don't we give that a try? Why not? It's kind of interesting looking, really interesting looking right now. You can clearly see the pattern of the stencil that's resisting from the triple thick, but, um, and also the triple thick is glossy still shining through against the mat of the pumice gel. I'm really liking this, but I'm gonna try hitting it with the sanding block, why not? Okay, so 
That has removed just even a little bit more paint from the surface of the triple thick. I'm gonna hit it again with my wet paper towel to get the dust off. That's kind of a really neat effect. There we go. So we've got this great kind of texture over texture and the sanding down has given me even more texture. So again, the sanding is giving some beautiful texture and it's also reinforcing the triple thick through the stencil, but it's giving me some nice scratchy texture. This is turning out to be a beautiful mixed media background. It's working well because I'm on a clay board or a gesso board. This is a hardboard panel. Um, so it really allows me to sand and work down through the layers that way. So it's giving me some beautiful texture and I think the birds are gonna look great on top of this. So now we get to add the birds to the mixed media background to complete our piece. And I've got them in both tissue and the printable rice paper. I think that the tissue is gonna disappear more completely and the printable rice paper a little less completely, but that will be part of our experiment. So now the idea is to figure out where to set the birds and which birds to use. So for the point of demonstrating, I wanna use one of tissue and one of rice paper and we'll call it birds on birds or bird on bird birds so he can stand on top of this one okay so we're gonna put carl down first and i'm going to run him off the left hand edge and this is the rice paper the principal rice paper from joggles i'm using liquitex gloss gel medium and my princeton catalyst number eight short handle filbert brush and this is the only brush i use for glue with collage <music> Now the key is not to super over vigorously brush this because you may disrupt the paint a little bit or damage the paper. But we've got both of them down now and they're looking really great over this mixed media resist background. So now that the birds are dry, you can see that the transparency, translucency is a little bit more obvious or a little bit more obvious with the rice paper than the tissue, but they both have a degree of white that is showing through. While I was brushing them, I lost a little bit um, in the tissue. I brushed kind of vigorously and I had tearing. And in the rice paper, I think I lost a little bit of paint. So I'm going to come back in with some Posca paint pens and sort of embellish these designs. And I'm gonna start with black to sort of fix up any areas that I um, missed. So I'm gonna come in here and reinforce the eye and the parts that sort of got a little bit damaged when I br over brushed the tissue. Tissue is very fragile and that is a challenge. The rice paper is a little more sturdy. It's less likely to fall apart when you're brushing it, but it's kind of fun to come back in here with the marker and just sort of add back in some of the detail that you may have missed. And then also we can add color to it or we can leave it black. We could keep it monochromatic and add earth tones to it, or we could add vibrant color to it. There's a lot of different ways you can treat this when you come back in to embellish with the paint markers. There we have both birds sort of reinforced with the black. And then it is obviously your choice as to whether or not you want to add some color in here. I'm seeing the pink of this stamp and thinking that adding a little pink 
into it could be nice if I just do a little accents. I've got a couple of different pink tips and a couple of different shades of pink that will pick up the pink from that stamp. And then also there's some green from this stamp. I don't have much in the way of dark green, but I do have a greenish teal. And I have a beautiful metallic copper marker that I think would lend itself nice to this background. And this is exactly the um, the technique that I used to create uh, these birds in a previous video as cards. Um, so I will link that in the upper right hand corner, that video on how to use the birds with Posca pens to create some fun little die cut cards. But I'm really liking the way these colors are matching sort of with the background. And I'll come in again with the black and maybe add some more patterning to the areas that I painted. or reinforce the lines because the Posca pens are opaque. So if they go over the lines at all, you may want to bring them back with the black. And there you have it. A super fun way to create bird on bird on birds on a unique mixed media background. Lots of layers, lots of techniques, and lots of fun. Well, happy Friday and thanks so much for being here. I hope that there is one layer or another that was utilized in this piece that you can use in your artwork. If not one of them, maybe all of them. So I look forward to seeing you back here next week. Please consider subscribing either via YouTube or via my blog. The blog link is in the upper right-hand corner. I think it's the other right-hand corner. Anyway, thanks and I'll see you again next week.